What's up guys, Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys a week 3 team builder for the AABL or the A-Drive Army Battle League, taking on my good pal Spanik at the Disco and the New York Rangers. We've played Spanik twice before now, once in PTL Season 2, which just ended, uh, and we beat him there in a convincing Hacks game, and then in WPL Season 8, uh, we played him in a nice meme match and hacks him out of that one too, so... Uh, hopefully the trend keeps up and I hacks him to death in this one, but I uh, can't count on that. Let's run through his team here. He's got the Z, Manaphy, Nihiligo, Galvantula, Darmanitan, Sneasel, Gligar, Agron, Megalopony, Reuniclus, Kamala, Kamala, Z, Salamence, and Z, Lilligant. Uh, the reason I run through those really quickly is because you guys can see it on the screen the entire time, but it helps me refresh my memory on what they have. So, uh, priority users, he's got the Sneasel with Ice Shard, um, the Lopony with Fake Out and Quick Attack, and the Kamala with Sucker Punch. Remove uh, hazard setting, sorry. Nihiligo with the rocks and T spikes. Galvanchlo with webs. Gligar with the rocks. Agron with the rocks. And that should be it. Uh, removal options he's got the Gligar with defog. Kamala with rapid spin. And Salamence with defog. And then four times weaknesses is the Nihiligo to ground. Sneasel to fighting. Gligar to ice. Agron to ground and fighting. Uh, and Salamence to ice. So obviously ground and ice. Sorry, ground, fighting, and ice actually covers all of his four times weaknesses so uh, that's really good to know another thing to note before i sort of get into what i'm expecting and not expecting he didn't draft a fairy uh and we'll talk about that when i get to my charizard a little bit <laughs> uh having no fairy is really detrimental in this format so it, it's kind of strange to me that he didn't even pick up like a low tier fairy and instead opted to go the lilligant route which obviously isn't the worst idea in the world but it's also a really poor grass type uh, i think Having such a weak steel type in the Agron is not going to help his case either. His team is really offensive. That's kind of what it comes down to, is that it's just hit and hit and hit and hit and sack and hit and sack and hit and sack. There aren't a ton of Pokemon that can switch into things on this team. I would say Kamala, Reuniclus, Gligar, Manaphy sometimes, Nihiligo sometimes is kind of what you're looking at in terms of switch-ins. Agron sometimes, I guess, as well. Um... It's, yeah, this team is really frail. So we're going to try and pick on that a little bit with my build. Uh, that's kind of the theme is that his team is really offensive. So I'm trying to make mine really offensive. So first up, what I'm not expecting, I don't really see Agron coming this week. I have triple water and double ground. <laughs> so it seems really unlikely to me that the Agron is going to come. Uh, it's definitely a solid way of offensively checking my Mega Charizard X which otherwise is reasonably difficult for him to offensively check. Uh, it's basically Mega Salamence, super, or sorry, regular Salamence, super, effective, super effectively hitting it, or like a Scarf Nihiligo in case I'm boosting. I think Scarf Nihiligo makes a lot of sense as a bring here. Um, and if Darmanitan comes, I'm not anticipating it to be Scarfed, actually. I, I don't think Darmanitan has any reason to be Scarfed against my team, um, just because Scarf Nihiligo does it better. Like, Scarf Nihiligo is a way to revenge kill something like Zapdos, a way to revenge kill something like Mega Charizard, and it puts me in a situation where I have to bring in a Rock Resist or a Poison Immunity or whatever. Um, and I'm not even bringing a Poison Immunity here. So, like, Nihil um, Nidoking is, like, my best Nihiligo answer. And maybe I'll change up the item on that, uh, just based on hearing that when I'm talking about it out loud. Um, so, either way, though, that's kind of on my list. I think Galvantula is going to bring webs, and that enables the Darmanitan even more. Um, Manaphy, I'm not sold i'm gonna see it's really offensively threatening against my team but i have triple grass once again uh obviously it can click ice beam and hp fire and it basically has all of my grass types covered but i also have my um obviously i also have all of my water types so he needs to run like ice beam energy ball hp fire um or he might not he might opt out of ice beam and just run energy ball hp fire scald tail glow it seems unlikely that he's going to find a set on Manaphy that's going to work offensively just against my 12 Pokemon. Um, because I also think... No, he definitely he needs Energy Ball for sure. He needs Energy Ball 100%. He needs HP Fire 100%. Uh, from there, I'm not sure what he would go with. He probably would want Water Stab. That would make the most sense. Like Surf. Um, but there's a lot of cases where he wants Ice Beam as well. So uh, specifically for the Gorgeist, I think it's really important that he has Ice Beam for the Gorgeist. But... Um, it's just my thought process there. Um, what else do I not think is coming? I don't think Kamal is coming. It's got a pretty ass, ass matchup against uh, Ferrothorn. Um, it can pivot in on a lot of stuff, but it really doesn't take hits very well, and my fighting type demolishes it, uh, like consistently demolishes it. 
even if he's like a banded last resort set, that would do a lot to the team that I'm bringing, but it wouldn't do a lot to my team in general. I've got a DNC and a Ferrothorn uh, and a Gorgeist, and I think Gorgeist by itself sort of turns off the idea of a banded last resort set, because uh, Gorgeist was something I was very much considering for the Megalopony, and I think that he's going to expect Gorgeist coming as a Megalopony check. Um, basically, any other Pokemon I think is coming. Probably. Um, Lilligant, just because grass types look like they're pretty good against me. Obviously, I have triple grass that they resist, and they beat my triple water in a sense. They obviously don't beat Golisopod, um, and they obviously don't beat Abomasnow as a grass type. Uh, so there's ways around that, of course. Um, it loses to a lot of other typings, but uh, I, I do think grass types have an all right matchup against me. So if I had to guess, I would say Salamence is coming. It's probably going to be Dragon NC. Um, Reuniclus is probably coming. Megalopony is definitely coming. I think Nihiligo is definitely coming. And then I would say probably something along the lines of Gligar Galvantula um, or Gligar Darmanitan or Gligar Manaphy. Um, I don't. He kind of needs to bring Gligar. I think. Uh, it's like his best Megazard X check defensively. Uh, otherwise, there's kind of nothing. So just keep keeping that in mind. Just keeping that in mind. Uh, so first up is Zapdos here. We've got the HP Ice Zapdos with Defog, Roost, and Discharge. HP Ice is there, of course, for the Gligar mainly, but also for the Salamence. Gligar is obviously the only ground type here. Uh, Salamence will take Discharge neutrally, and it'll hit the Lilligant, but I really don't want to stay in on the Lilligant because it's just going to like Sleep Powder me or Quiver Dance on me and I, I don't like those options um so I'd, I'd really prefer that lilligan doesn't show up honestly because uh, it's quite the problem for my zapdos um everything else i would love to get discharge damage off against um that's that's pretty much it uh, there's a lot of stuff that i pivot out on like directly uh this is like a pseudo megalopony answer i'm still gonna get two shot by adamant megalopony and i believe he can run adamant against me let me just like pull up the calc here um, I, I kind of rushed this build quite a bit. I did. I built for this much later than I should have, um, and I didn't realize how offensive his team was. So I'm just gonna try and pull up a max HP Zapdos calc. Uh, I, I didn't want to give up the speed on Zapdos. I think it's really important that I don't just get set up on by the Manaphy. I want to at least speed tie the Manaphy and get a discharge off against it. Um, so let's take away the defensive investment, and I'm timid against a Lopany Mega. And he can be adamant, I believe it'll still out. Yeah, it's still at speeds Persian, so he can be adamant. So I don't live two adamant returns. That's a problem. Um, there's not much I can do about that, honestly. So the goal is essentially get a static para. That, that's the goal against the Lopany. I don't have another play. Yay! <laughs> so that's what this game's going to be. That's what this game's going to be. I'm speed tying the Manaphy and the Salamence. It, it's going to be a hard-hitting game. It's going to go back and forth and back and forth. Um, it's either going to end in a sweep for me with my setup sweeper or a sweep for him with his setup sweeper, or it's going to be a complete and utter bloodbath, and it's going to end 2-0 or lower. That's kind of my prediction of what's going to happen in this game. Adamant Lopany is a gigantic threat and a problem against my team. We'll see if it comes. I may or may not regret not bringing Gorgeist. I was really tempted to bring Gorgeist. Uh, it... There's reasons for it, though. You know, it kind of loses to Darmanitan. It loses to Mence. It's kind of set up fodder for Manaphy. It's kind of free beast boost for Nihiligo and whatnot. So uh, it was really scary. Charizard's next. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm running Dragon Ants, Outrage, Earthquake, and Roost. So um, I'm actually running a bulky Charizard, and I might regret this as well. And I might actually just change this based on some calcs that I'm going to run here while we're in... Um, while we're in the team builder here, but um, I thought I was able to live a Salmon's hit, uh, like Outrage from Salmon's with max HP. 248. Uh, okay, so I'm not actually, I'm not. But I'm not running Flare Blitz, I'm running Outrage and Earthquake on my end. So if I can speed time, my Outrage is obviously doing more than his. Um, the idea behind this is obviously he has no fairy, so he doesn't really have a way to stop me from clicking Outrage. I, in fact, his only Dragon Resist is Agron. So let's see how much Agron takes. Um, and if it happens to be that Agron comes in on a turn where I get the Outrage Confusion. Yeah, it's only taking like 20. Uh, Agron's got really good physical bulk. It's 180 defense. But uh, it'll die to an Earthquake. <laughs> it's a 50% chance to die to an Earthquake right off the bat. Um, if it's Rockhead and if it's Sturdy, then Outrage into Earthquake will kill it. Or Rocks into Earthquake will kill it. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind Zard. 
Um, and I actually just realized I was thinking about changing my Nido King's item, but I'm going to opt out of changing the Nido King's item just based on what I said. So yeah, Mono Outrage, well, Mono Outrage plus Earthquake is, is really solid against this team. Gligar with max HP is semi setup fodder. Uh, that's why I'm running max HP actually, is because Earthquake becomes a really low chance to two-shot me um, with max HP Charizard, and I'm actually running no attack, so... Outrage itself is doing pretty much nothing to the Gligar. Uh, it's doing 24 to 29, but like I said, the Gligar is setup fodder. Um, so what I would likely do is probably alternate between clicking Dragon Ants and Roost against that thing. Especially if it wants to switch into me. Uh, like something that I threaten out, for example, possibly the Reuniclus. Uh, possibly the Darmanitan. I obviously chew hits from the Darmanitan pretty well, unless he locks into EQ. If he's choice, if he's not choice, then that's a lot better for him um, in the 1v1 against Zard. So I, I definitely have to play this carefully, but I think that this max HP Zard is probably still the way to go. Obviously, I brought a very bulky Charizard against Zack in week one. Um, I don't have the luxury of having as much attack investment as I did then. So this is what we're rocking with on the Charizard, and uh, it should be... It, it has a solid matchup. If I can get up to plus two, then I think the game is just over. Um, and I also thought about running Dragon Claw over Outrage, but it's it's really spammable, and Outrage is just such a nuke against a lot of stuff. You know, do I need the nuke, or can I just run with Dragon Claw? <sighs> Dragon Claw. Yeah, I mean, Dragon Claw is not really doing that much to Gligar either, but that thing is just such a pain in the ass. Uh, realistically, I I need Gligar dead. For a lot of stuff to happen, Diggersby in particular um, is is a really good win con for me, and I need Gligar dead. But uh, Keldeo is a really solid way of just hitting it, and Zapdos comes in on it for free essentially. So um, I'm maybe not as worried as I should be. But uh, Diggersby is next. I'm running Yachi Berry, so the reason I'm Yachi is for a Sneasel. I can live an Ice Shard from it up, uh, live a Banded Ice Shard from it, and kill it after an Agility. Um, so, big thing with Diggersby here is that after an agility, I outspeed Scarf to Hiligo, which is the fastest possible Scarfer that I think is coming. I don't see a reason for Scarf called Galvantula to come unless it's speed time Keldeo. And if it does, it's going to have to lock in HP Ice anyways, so um, I can save the Yachi for that if the Steam still doesn't come, I guess. Um, it's also for an Ice Punch Megalopony, although he'd rather click a fighting move against me for sure. Uh, Ice Beam Manaphy, but again, he'd want to click Water Move, so... Um, th there's, it's really for the Sneasel and the Galvantula. That's kind of the reason it's there. Also for an HP Ice Nihiligo, which I think is the most likely bring on the Nihiligo's HP Ice to hit both the, um, the Needle King and the... Or actually, it might be HP Fire for Ferrothorn. Now that I'm thinking about it, the Nihiligo probably won't have a way to hit both of these unless it's Grass Knot, which will only hit the Needle King neutrally. So uh, Ice Punch is there for the Gligar and the Salamence. I'm a little bit worried about an Intimidate Salamence. That could be really annoying because I'm not Sword Stance, but I really felt like I needed Ice Punch to break through Gligar. Return breaks through pretty much everything else that is an Aggron and Nihiligo, and I've got Earthquake for both of those. So if it's Air Balloon Aggron, that's a problem. Uh, besides that, it's, it's not really a problem. Um, and I get to run Adamant, because my speed investment um, outspeeding the Hiligo, Scarf Nihiligo. So, uh, Adamant Diggersby is going to be quite a threat late in the game. This is basically my win con later on. I'm not entirely sure what I can set up on. Potentially the Gligar, like I mentioned before. Um, the, I don't know. Nihiligo locked into Power Gem or Sludge Wave or something. Or Galvantula locked into Electric Attacks. Uh, again, it's going to be a really offensive matchup, so I, I didn't plan that far in advance, but I, I can see that it's a good win con against this team. Uh, Scarf Keldeo is also a good win con. This will speed tie his fastest possible Scarf that he's going to bring against me. Scarf Sneasel is a total unset. It's not coming against me by any means. Secret Sword should be really spammable late game. That's if I can get rid of the Gligar and if I can deal with the Reuniclus, which is what my next Pokemon, which is what the Persian is there for. Um... Icy Wind is just for some speed control against like things like the Salamence, but I outspeed the Salamence uh, after Dragon Dance, and so I can Icy Wind it. Hopefully he's not Yachi. Uh, Hydro Pump is just there for like extreme amounts of damage if I need it. Um, it's pretty much overkill against anything that would be weak to Keldeo. I think Scarf Surf is enough against the Dramanitan, and I think I click Sacred Sword against the Nihiligo. Anyways, um, I'm... Why am I not speed tying Galvantula? I'm outspeeding Nihiligo? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> we're speed time Galva uh, we're speed time Galvantula. 
Um, that's that's not a thing that's going to happen. I'm not going to get outsped by Scarf Galvangela. Um, ties Scarf. Ties Scarf Galv. There we go. So that's the investment for Keldeo. Persian, I am Taunt, Foul Play, Toxic, Play Rough. Um, I'm not sure how well this will deal with Arena Clis. I obviously don't have a great way to hit it super effectively, but I can taunt it from clicking Recover, and Foul Play might do enough later on. Um, play Rough is there for Lopany. If I can catch a Lopany switching in on a Foul Play or something, um, it's kind of the only reason I had Play Rough there. Uh, also for the Sneasel, I guess, and the Salamence potentially. Toxic can be really useful against anything not named Nihiligo. Um Oh, you know what? I don't need Play Rough. I don't even have Parting Shot on this set. That's the problem. There we go. Parting Shot. So Taunt, Foul Play, Toxic, Parting Shot. I'm Speed Tying, Sneasel, Max HP, for Coat. Uh, Nido King's last Life Orb set with Rocks, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and Sludge Wave. This is pretty much perfect coverage against the team. I could be running like the T-Bolt to hit the Manaphy, but it's going to outspeed me anyway, so there's no point. Sludge Wave does the most damage to Mons like Galvantula, like, um, like Reuniclus, like... Lilligant, um, like Kamala, like Sneasel, uh, f just for example, all, all of those, like Lopany. Um, I shouldn't be able to live Lopany hits, even with my bulk investment. I don't think it would make a difference, but I do have quite a bit of bulk investment just based on his speed tiers. Um, I didn't feel like it was necessary for me to speed creep Gligar, because there's no reason for Gligar to run max speed to speed time me. So I'm speed creeping max speed Kamala, which also seems way out of the realm of possibility, but he could run it to speed tie like max speed of Bomb Snow for some reason. So that's kind of where I'm creeping there with the, uh, with the Nido King. Life Orb hits are going to hurt, and this is a really solid lead option because it'll either bait out an HPAs from Galvantula, or it can do um, a couple other things there. Uh, this is a really solid way. It's a four times Sludge Wave resist from the Nihiligo, so I can switch into the Nihiligo if it's not packing Psychic, um, which I, I think it probably has to pack Psychic. It's going to be like HP Fire, Psychic, Sludge Wave, Power Jump uh, is kind of what I would imagine the, uh, the Nihiligo set's going to be. Um, Ice Beam is there for the Salamence and the Gligar. Gligar in particular, again, so I've got multiple ways to get rid of the Gligar. I've got uh, Ice Coverage, Ice Coverage, Ice Coverage, Water Coverage, Ice Coverage. Um, so Gligar shouldn't be able to stop my Charizard, but um, it, it might be able to. Uh, taunting it with the Persian is another solid way to deal with it. Taunting it into Parting Shot is basically, that's that's when it's free setup fodder for my Charizard. So uh, that's kind of where I'm going to go from there. Uh, this is Nido King. I might just lead with it again, like I did last game, because uh, it absolutely destroyed last game. Five kills for the Nido King, and it could probably pick up a bunch here. But that's gonna be for me, guys. This is quite a long team builder. Um, no, it's not, because I need to explain what I'm not bringing. Uh, Ferrothorn is not coming because of Darmanitan, and it's set of fodder for Salamence potentially, although Gyro Ball. Um, I think the Manaphy is gonna run HP Fire, and so just the threat of Ferrothorn there forces HP Fire from like Manaphy and the Nihiligo. Potentially forces an HP fire from the Galvantula, uh, although I do think it has to be HP ice, uh, unless it wants to be energy ball for the diggers to be. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. What else? What else? What else? It's set up fodder for Reuniclus, that's for sure. Slowking is kind of eh. It can tank. Ugh. Excuse me, it can tank man if he hits, and it can tank Nihiligo hits. Uh, everything else beats it 1v1. So there's no point in bringing Slowking. DNC, I was considering as a Salamence check. I've done it before, actually. Um, I was some wacky variant of DNC against the Salamence in NCL Season 3. Excuse me, Obama Snow? I was very much considering it. Had a really good offen offensive matchup here. Just gets bopped by the common Scarfers on this team. Uh, Gorgeist, I was very much considering for the Megalopony. May bring it a second time if we play a second time. Same with Glycepod. I thought about running a Banded Glycepod set. Um, because it's going to be really fast-paced, I think Banded Glycepod can revenge kill a lot of this stuff really effectively. Uh, especially the Gligar. It'll just drop to Banded Liquidation. It's not even funny. Um, in fact, this entire team just basically drops to Banded Glycepod. It was just really hard to fit it on the team, and Banded, in, banded into priority moves is very dangerous, so uh, that's why we're not bringing Glycepod. So now it's finally, that's finally it for me, uh, and I'll catch you guys for the match.